I want to congratulate you for your second consecutive uh, New York State Sportscaster of the Year Award, and it's awarded by the National Sportscasters and Sports Writers Association. Uh, so talk about, like, um, you know, how gratifying is it to have so much respect for so many years from it, your peers? It, it's really nice. It's nice to get, get honored, you know, but you don't do it, you don't do this job to be honored. Mm -hmm. you, you, fortunately, sometimes you get recognized, but... I do it because I really enjoy it. I mean, how many people go to work and really love what they're doing? Right. And you're covering sports. And we all grew up wanting to be sports, whether players or or announcers or coaches. We wanted to be involved in sports in some capacity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So to get up in the morning and to be covering your city and to be covering the metropolitan area and and doing stuff with sports, it, it's really what I always wanted to do. Yes, so. Yes that makes it a lot easier to, to go about the business. And with a great support staff, you would never have a chance to win an honor like that without great producers and cameramen and our people at the, you know, WNBC have been awesome. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've been blessed to to be with a great team because you can't win alone. That's right. That's for sure. There's no. I got I, lucky yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, it's it's great. And and talk about that passion that you have for sports. Um, you know, uh, growing up in New Jersey, and and uh, were you passionate? Because you've had a versatile career covering every major sporting event that can be named. Hey, I, you know? I, I, I always like, wanted to be involved in sports. I wanted to play in the NBA, but unfortunately, I had some limitations. <laughs> uh, I was imitating Marv Albert as a little kid, right side line, Monroe, okay. deep right corner to muster hands to read well it turns back to the basket to Bradley yes out of count wow, so wow. I was imitating Marv as a kid mm. I was listening to Marty Glickman Gogolak's kick is up it's high enough it's deep enough it's good it's good the Giants <laughs> lead 13 to 7 so I would listen to these guys and I would emulate them and I would turn down the, the, the radio at the time mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. actually turn down the TV and like try to do the play-by-play -play wow, with the TV wow. or listen to the radio in my room while I was lying in bed and you know, the Knicks would be on the West Coast, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I would do stats for games that were on radio, which is insane. Wow, wow. And I would have my own little league where I would throw the ball against the house and keep stats. And so I always was into it, and I always loved it. And, wow. you know, it, it's kind of following your dream. So, mm -hmm. you know, in many ways, it's you know, getting, getting lucky to do what you like to do. I, I wasn't good enough to play in the NBA, but at least I'm able to, to announce some of the stuff with the NBA, you know? Wow, wow. And the, and going to Ithaca, Ithaca College, you know, which is very prestigious liberal arts college. And, and uh, you know, what was the foundation that helped you establish your long-lasting career? You know, it's funny because my major was accounting. Oh, And, and okay. it goes to show that... That's with the BS, the BS. Yes, I got a BS. Mm -hmm. uh, accounting was my major, so I got... BS in business administration, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but my area of, of study was accounting. Mm -hmm. One semester I took calculus, uh, intermediate accounting, cost accounting, um, all of these business law. Mm -hmm. What was I doing in business law? Oh. I was learning about torts. <laughs> I wanted to learn about jump shots. You know? <laughs> I have no idea why I picked accounting, but you know, I tried to transfer into the School of Communications while I was at Ithaca, mm -hmm. and my grades weren't good enough. Oh. You needed like a three or five or three six, and I didn't have it, so mm -hmm. I just did it on did it on the side. And mm -hmm. you know, it, I was the first non-major to win an award, oh. and it goes to show that you can do this field, you can excel in this field by getting experience. I call it, you know actual experience, hands-on experience, right. versus necessarily, you know, going to all of those classes. And that's not to, to demean anything to do with, with Ithaca or any other school or a, a system of education. Mm -hmm. It just means this field's different than learning the accounting. You have to know about an income statement. You've got to do mm -hmm. it according to certain LIFO, FIFO, last in, first out, first in, first out. You have to understand mm -hmm. that stuff. But TV, you've got to go out there and do it. And do it. Yeah. You've got to learn how to interview and practice and, and be bad first and get better. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. hopefully get better than that. That's right. That's right. Because there's no such thing as beginner's luck. You know? it, it was great experience, though. They, Ithaca had tremendous facilities, and I was able to do radio and TV there and, and kind of get a start. Wow. Wearing the... Uh, Wearing the jeans or the sweatpants with the cleats and the blazer and the tie and finish the cast and race out of the studio to the, to the football field for an intramural game of football. Wow, wow, that's that, woo, that passion. Wow, that that's good. amazing, amazing. And and right after I think I talk about your beginning, uh, your beginnings professionally. I started out at Suburban Cable Vision TV3 East Orange, New Jersey with Bob Lee. Mm -hmm. I called him the Bullet. He's been yeah. at ESPN for 
since 30 the, yeah, since the beginning eight years yeah, 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 yeah or 39 wow. i remember 1980 when he left he was going to this fledgling outlet called espn we said he was crazy <laughs> uh, he made the right decision i mean chris berman that's right uh tommy's uh mm -hmm. george grand those tommy's guys god rest his soul yes. yeah, yeah and suburban provided a, a lot of opportunities to do high school sports where a lot of my passion for high school sports really emanates from mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. did seton hall and rutgers as well wow and we did a, a call-in show each week called time in and a scoreboard show during the football season a lot of those coaches still to this day are my friends, oh, and wow. a lot of the players I, I like met Bill Rafter, over the years. Like Bill Rafter, Raff was, mm -hmm. I edited Raff's first resume tape. <laughs> he owes me. <laughs> I'll let him know. He, he knows <laughs> that. So you know Raff's relationship at the beginning, and you know Jerry Eisenberg, mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and Coach uh, Tony Verducci, who was okay. Tom Verducci's dad. Oh, wow. He was the first interview I did on this talk show called Time In, mm -hmm. and and I'll always love the man. And uh, Tommy knows how I had a special relationship with his dad, wow, wow, wow. who who who's since uh, passed on. But oh, okay. you know, he, he supported me, and he was one of the guys at the beginning that you know was was in my corner. They gave you that foundation. Yes.